Sudomais, good morning. How are you doing today? Uh, so this is not bad, just started. Um, how about me? Same same for me, I got a little bit of a late start uh, this morning, but uh, it's all good now because I'm able to do a little bit of rest programming. Um, all right, so the plan for me today is to uh, create the obstacle. So we're gonna do something very similar to the player here. We're gonna create our uh, an obstacle struct. So let's go ahead and do that. So pub struct obstacle. And we know this is gonna be very similar to the player. It's just not gonna be affected by gravity. So we're gonna have, um, uh, it's gonna have a location. Uh, and we know that that is gonna be a, a vector too. So we need to use ggz and algebra. Um, so vector two, we also know that we're gonna have that point two because we have to export it as a point two for the draw function later. Okay, so we have a, a location, which is a vector two. We also are gonna have a, let's see, what, what is it gonna be? Um, well, we know that we need the entire sort of like movement thing, but we don't need acceleration because it's gonna be moving at a very, um, well, is that true? Uh, I think we just need the velocity and we can slowly add to the velocity to make it go a little bit faster. So we're gonna have a velocity, which is also a vector two, F32. Um, all right, so a location and a velocity, and I think uh, I think that's gonna be it for this obstacle, at least right now. So let's let's go ahead and start implementing it. So we have a pub function new. Uh, we know that we're gonna want to take in the location when we create it, which is, uh, so we're gonna want, same thing as before, location x, f32, location y, we're going to return a um, an obstacle. Uh, okay, so returning this, uh, well, let's set our velocity first. So that velocity equals vector two new, and then we'll return the obstacle and give it the location and velocity. Okay, so that gives us um, uh, our obstacle that we can create, but we also know, know that we're gonna need to have the, um, uh, the mesh. So use ggz. We know that we're going to need the mesh builder and game result, so let's go ahead and get a game result out of here. It's ggz uh, graphics. So here we're going to need mesh and mesh builder. And I believe that's all we're going to need. I'm planning on making this be a, a triangle. Ooh, right. So we need a width and a height. So a width. Uh, F32 and a height F32. So we can just set these in here uh, width. So they, they know what their own widths and heights are. So a width is, let's just say something like 10.0 um, and we'll see how that, how that goes. And a height, uh, let's make this be exactly the same.
Uh, okay, so we have our location, velocity, width, and height. Uh, now we're going to create the the mesh. So pub function create mesh. Um, I don't know. Well, we know we're going to take in uh, self. Uh, I'm not going to make it mutable. It's just going to create a mesh from this point. We're not going to store it inside of the this um, this creature. Uh, and we're going to return a game result that has a mesh inside. Uh, all right, so let's create it. So I'm thinking a triangle that's upside down. And we'll probably just create it to be white at this time, but we can have it be a random color pretty easily too, if necessary. Uh, okay, so if I have... Um, a triangle is simply just a bunch. Well, there's actually, I believe, a triangle method. So if I return OK, uh, well, actually, let's just do let mesh equals uh, our mesh builder new. And then I believe it's triangle. There's triangles. What else is there? There's polyline. Okay, there's polygon. Polygon might work. So it's in clockwise order. So I can start from the top left, move right, and then down and up like that. That would that would be a uh, a triangle. Yeah, I think that might be it. There's polygon too. Create a new mesh for a closed polygon. The closed. I wonder. I wonder if that would work. Polyline or polygon. Let's try polyline first. So polyline. Oh, draw mode. Right, we need that. So that's under graphics. Draw mode. draw mode, we're going to fill this. Uh, and then here's our points. Uh, so this is going to be a reference to just a pure array of, um, of points. So we do we do need that uh, point two. So if we do something like, uh, well, I guess we, I don't, I could just do this straight in here. Um, let's actually create these right here. So triangle points. All right, so just a pure, a pure array. So the first point is going to be up and to the left. Uh, so we could just say that's zero, zero. So this is going to be a point two, new, zero, 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 zero. Okay, the second point is probably the down one. So luckily we have this width and height. So down is going to be the full the full height, but the width is going to be half of the width. So we're going to say point 2 new. Uh, so this is going to be our self dot width uh, divided by 2.0. And then the height is the full, so self dot and then the last point, um, so point two, new, uh, is now going to be back up to the top. So the x is going to be at the full width, self dot width, uh, and then zero dot zero. Do these need to be closing, or can I just leave it like this? Let's find out. So if I do that, now I'm going to pass in a reference to these triangle points and then the color. So let's just use graph uh, white for right now until we decide we want something else. Uh, okay, so we have um, polyline. What does polyline return? So polyline itself returns a game result 
series of connected lines, I think I might have to add one more point into it to like intersect them, but maybe maybe it'll figure out that this point goes to this point and it draws its own line. We'll find out. All right, so I need to question mark this to return the game result. Uh, and then we're going to build. Um, right, we need a context. Uh, and then contact a build, we're going to question mark that. And that's actually going to, actually that returns the mesh. So I might just want, I think I can just um, return this as it is. Otherwise, yeah, because it's, it's the full, it's the full mesh and it's the full game result. So I think I can just return the mesh. Yeah, okay. So this should be enough to draw something to the screen. Uh, let's go back to the main library here. I will bring in some mod obstacle use obstacle obstacle. We're gonna, I know we're eventually gonna store two of them. Let's just store one for right now. So we're gonna have obstacle one. And I'm going to say that it is uh, type obstacle. Okay, we need to create it. So that obstacle one equals obstacle new. And new takes in, uh, I believe, the x and y coordinates of where we want to place it. So if I just want to place it willy nilly wherever you know, wherever, I could just say, all right, well, what if I do like 500.0 and 500.0? Um, and then we'll question mark. Actually, the new one doesn't, it um, uh, doesn't do. Yeah, we could just create the new one like that. Then we need to create the obstacle mesh. So obstacle mesh uh, is a type mesh. So let's just use this on obstacle one. We're gonna now create mesh. And uh, inside of here, we do need to pass in the context. And so let's pass in our obstacle one and our obstacle mesh. We have an error, what's your error? Uh, found was impul. Spelling that correct would be helpful. Now, now what? Cannot find location in scope. Um, right. Well, actually, no. Location X. I need to create the location. So let location equals vector two new location X location Y. That'll do that. Uh, found a semicolon, right, expected a semicolon. So we need to semicolon that. And that is all the errors. So let's see if this works. Actually, uh, there's nothing to run yet. Uh, we need to draw out the, op the, uh, the mesh to the screen. So that's gonna be in our draw uh, function here. So we have graphics draw for the player. Let's now draw the, um, uh, the obstacle. So we're going to do graphics draw and the context for the drawable this is going to be a reference to self dot obstacle one, um, actually obstacle mesh, and then the params. Okay, so this is draw param default dot destination and this is where we need to get the, uh, from the obstacle we need to sort of well, get its location. So pub function get location self, uh, this is gonna be a point two 
of f32s. All right, so we're just going to return here uh, point to new, uh, and it's going to be self dot location dot x self dot location dot y. That wasn't save. Okay, so now this allows us in our dest to put this point. So that's going to be our self dot obstacle one dot get location. And I believe that's all we need from this. So I save that, let it auto snap into the correct location. And uh, hopefully we should have an obstacle just sort of floating in air. Let's see whether or not we get that or if it crashes. All right, I see an obstacle. It's a super, super, super small triangle. So we, we probably want to make that just a teeny bit bigger. So in our obstacle, we have our, our width and height is 10. Let's at least double this, like 25 by 25. If I save you, There we go, that looks a little bit better. All right. Um, yeah, I know it, it was so small the first time that like it's it was hard to see. Now, we want to put this on the ground because you know there's, yes, we can jump, but that obstacle is not gonna pose us any problems whatsoever. So let's make sure that it's on the ground. Now, luckily, we are uh, telling the obstacles when we create them in the main library where we want them to appear. And then they're sort of stuck there forever. So in when we create the obstacle right here, uh, we're just saying 500, 500. So if I keep it with 500, 500 for the X, but the Y, uh, I want to make this, I want to make this be um, at the, the, sort of like the player height. And if I do that, uh, I guess like a problem that I see is, how does it know, how do I know where to set that? Because the obstacle knows how tall it is and it's setting that. So I think I kind of need to set, so let um, obstacle uh, size, um, because I'm making this a, a what is it, equilateral, equilateral triangle? Uh, so each side is gonna be the same. So obstacle size, if I say this is 25.0, um, this will allow me to now grab the width and height of the arena. So let um, width and height of the arena, so um, arena width, arena height equals uh, so this is going to be off of graphics, drawable size, pass in the context. And now I can use this, uh, this here. So the X is going to be the same, but I'm going to want you to be the arena height, um, arena height minus the obstacle size. And that will put it just right up there. Dato, good morning. Do I not use the ECS, um, an ECS framework? Not for this game. I don't think I need it for this game. Um, I have used a specs before in the past. Uh, and and that it's worked out just fine for what I needed to do it. And it was able to like get what I, uh, like make the changes super easily. Uh, and I was able to get a bunch of things onto the screen at the same time, but uh, in this case, 
I don't know. I feel like for for learning the game design programming patterns, it might be easier to like go with the more object oriented sort of looking way. Of course, we may find that we need to like uh, refactor that if the game is suggesting, hey, time to use ECS. If the game book. Uh, okay, so by doing this, uh, I'd now need to pass in the obstacle size, which of course is going to make the obstacle upset because it is not expecting that. So location X, location Y, and then we're going to just say our size, and that is an F32. And we're going to say our width and height are now um, based upon this size. Cannot find value size in this scope. Oh, wait. Not there. You silly you. Goes here. F32. I saw parentheses and I'm like, oh, it just goes there. No, no, no. Okay, so that gives us the size. Nothing else should change in here. If we run this, let's see if it's now at the bottom of the screen. It is, okay. So that's perfect. Now um, I want to make this obstacle start moving to the left. So with the obstacle moving to the left, all we have to do is set the initial velocity to be, to be something. Like it could be really, really small. So maybe when we create our obstacle, it's velocity is uh, negative 0 0.001. Like let's see how slow that is. Um, now our y isn't going to change. We want that to be sort of stuck to the bottom. But we're going to have to have some kind of update to update the location based upon this velocity. So pub function, um, this is, I think I'll just call this run. So like just run it. Mute self, don't need to return anything. Uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say self.location plus equals self.velocity. And that should be it for this. Now in the main library, when we hit run in the update, we can say, okay, self.obstacle1.run. There we go. It should be constantly moving to the left now. Let's, let's check that out. Well, it is moving to the left. I will grant it that. Um, it, it's not a very big worry right now because it's taking forever. So my player can just sort of take a nap, not need to worry about having to jump over this thing anytime soon. Uh, let's increase that speed just a, just a teeny bit. So in our obstacle, uh, we want to set our vector to be maybe a little bit fat, you know, a little bit faster. Hey, that looks pretty good. Um, so let's now start our obstacle off the screen to the right. So we have plenty of time to see it coming. So our initial location for the obstacle for the X can be the arena width plus the obstacle size. So that way we make sure it's it doesn't like sort of appear out of nowhere. So if I save this, and here it comes. And I'm able to jump over just fine. The height is great. Um, 
So that that's good. Now, I guess a problem here is uh, as soon as the uh, the obstacle disappears off of the left of the screen, it's gone forever. Like, okay, so we ran past one obstacle. That's not too hard. Let's add in. Let let's have the obstacle reappear. So like, um. We don't really have to change anything about the obstacle. We just have to change its location again. Uh, so we can reset. We could basically have the obstacle reset its location. So if we if we remember its initial location, so initial location uh, can be can be a vector too. And so we have our location. We also need our initial location. Um, yes, uh, physics. Uh, good morning. Uh, we could also have a um, an object pool for these obstacles, but we only need two. So I don't think I don't think that's going to be a, you know I don't think we need to go that far. Uh, so we're going to have our initial location, and I'm just going to say, hey, what if we just take our initial location here and let's clone it. So you have a perfectly good copy of it. And initial location, we'll store it in here. Then we can have a reset function. So pub function reset location itself. We're not going to return anything. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, let's just overwrite. We can say self.location. Uh, equals, and then we'll just reclone the uh, the vector. So self dot initial location dot clone. So just just reclone that and resets it all the way all the way back to the right. Um, using clone and a co okay fine I'll copy it. Oh I need to let's see. Self that initial location. Are you okay with me doing that? You're okay with me doing that here on a vector. Do I need to implement a clone on obstacle for me to clone it like this? So in Rust, um, I think so. It's it's not a full error uh, using clone on a copy type. So this is a Clippy. Clippy is yelling at me. help try removing the clone call. So Clippy doesn't want me to do this. Even though it looks like I can, um, it just, uh, it, it, it's just telling me this is not a good idea. So what I can do is just do this in two lines here, where I can just say, okay, well, if I do self dot, uh, it's an implicit copy. Yeah, I, I yeah, it, it is. Wait, it will automatically copy this for me? Okay. I don't mind that at all. As long as I don't lose lose ownership of it, but okay. So I guess I guess it's going to to copy it itself. Which means I don't need to do this either. All right, so then uh, we're never reading the initial location, uh, right? Because we're never calling reset location. So we need to decide. Um, so thank you, Data, for that. That that's really awesome. Um, it's nice that we don't need that. Uh, Rust automatically deals, like, you know, helps us with that uh, automatically. So what is next? We are going to have the obstacle when it runs off of the left hand of the screen we want it to just disappear and reappear on the right hand side of the screen so we need some kind of logic to determine are we off the edge of the playing field and maybe the obstacle can tell us that so if i have pub function um is off is outside arena is um 
It's like just to the left of the arena, uh, but maybe like um, off screen. Uh, we only need a reference to self, but I'm also gonna need a, um, a copy of the arena width, which we know is gonna be an F32. And we're gonna return a Boolean. Uh, so this should be pretty simple. We're gonna return uh, self.location. So that's that upper left corner of the triangle. If that is to the left of the screen, um, that's gonna be fine, but then we also have extending to the right uh, the actual triangle. So it's gonna be self.location plus self.width if that is less than 0, .0 um, well, just return this. Uh, Self.location.x. Because I don't really care about the y. Okay, so in our main library, we have a bunch of functions we can now run for this. So in our update, we're going to run the function. And then we're going to say, okay, if you're off the screen, so if self obstacle one that is off screen, we need to pass it the arena width, so we finally get to use this. Uh, that gives us a boolean. So if it's true that we're off the screen, we're going to run self dot obstacle one dot, and then we're going to reset the location. And that hopefully should make it just continuously loop through the uh, the arena here. Let's find out. And there we go. Okay, so it now appears exactly where we you know, we wanted it to, uh, right at the beginning. And so it's just. Well, I mean, we, we can see it. It's just uh, coming along. Okay, so that's, that's very nice for us. Uh, if I want to increase its speed to make it a little bit more difficult every single time we jump. Let's, let's try that. So in obstacle, we could have maybe a function increase speed. Actually, I don't need to return anything on this. I just need to increase the speed by some amount. So maybe the obstacle can store this in it inside of itself. So it's um, speed increase rate uh, can be an F32. And that's going to, we'll just add that to the X of the, um, the velocity. Okay, so let speed increase rate equals, let's do something like um, negative zero dot, uh, I could actually just do this as a positive number, and then we have to remember to uh, make it a negative number at speed increase rate, or I can make this a negative number here. So maybe if I do something like 0 0.1, that will double the speed, maybe 0 0.01. Uh, we'll store that. And then we can use that down here. So self dot velocity plus equals because we have that negative number self dot speed increase rate and so now we need to uh, somehow tell the the well somehow tell this okay go ahead and increase your speed um, every time well whenever I feel like it if I just put it inside of this update though the every frame will increase its speed, which might be a little bit too much because 
I mean, the, it, it's running lots and lots of frames per second. So, how do we want to deal with this? I could have it run every single time it goes off the screen. Uh, now, once I have two, uh, two of them, we, we do remember that that became a problem uh, because they sort of like get, they kind of move faster than each other for a you know, specific amount. I'm, I'm thinking that maybe every X seconds, we just increase the speed. That, that might work for us. So in here we can, uh, we can store increase speed every seconds. Uh, and this will be, I think we can have this be, um, I'm gonna make this just a U size right now. Uh, but I can't remember what the timer gives us for like how long it's been. Uh, duration, essentially. So if I say that increase speed every X seconds, we're going to make this, uh, let's say every like five seconds. Now in update, uh, we need to track to see, okay, uh, has it now been five seconds? Uh, do I need to now track the last time? Ooh, maybe, maybe so increase every seconds. Um, I may need to track like the next time to, to increase the speed. Um, increase speed uh, time uh, and I can't remember when this is this this might just be like an f64 let's try that so this I bet this is an X f64 uh, so increase speed time If I just say zero, it's going to increase the speed right away. So if I just say something like 100 from now, whatever whatever this this number is, I don't really know what this number is supposed to be. Um, we're we're probably going to figure that out. Actually, we might be able to, to figure that out right now because we have the context. I bet we can get the duration and everything else. So if I uh, do, we have the timer. So off of GGEZ, there's a timer. So let's go ahead and use this. So we're gonna do timer, uh, and then, so average delta, check update time, check whether or not the desired amount of time has elapsed since the last frame. Okay, that's not what I want. Uh, duration x64, that's not what I want. So there's sleep, ticks, time since start. I think that's what I want. Returns the time since the game was initialized as reported by the system clock. Okay, so if we get time since start right now, um, context, uh, so we pass it in the context, this gives us a duration. So now I'm going to want to set the increase speed time. Um, and so maybe this is going to be um, time since start to increase speed. Uh, it's a little bit of a nasty variable name. I don't know, like I'll have to figure out something else. Uh, maybe to put it in there for right now, it's like extremely uh, explicit about what what my intention is. So we want this to be let time 
since start equals we get that now we're going to do time since start dot what what can we do here so we can do as sex f64 okay that gives us our f64 here um that's like right now it should be zero but i guess it might be one or, or something uh plus uh, increase speed every every seconds and that will give us the first time we want to increase the speed so now we're going to store so we have uh, increase speed every x seconds and then we want to store this too time since start to increase speed Found F64. Wait, did I say F64? Uh, I probably want. Uh, Ajinkya. Um, I don't know if I pronounced your username correctly, but hello. Good morning. Uh, let's see. Can I do as sex not F64? I can do F6. Ooh, that's a U64. That's better. Uh, you love GGEZ? You're learning Rust? Awesome! Yeah, GGEZ is a lot of fun. I love it for uh, creative coding. So let's change you to U64s here. That'll make you happy. So now in update, we can basically do that calculation again and, uh, and then increase, like, basically determine if it's time to increase the speed. So we want the time since start... Um, We can actually set this because I believe this is since the beginning of the game, we can easily just set this, okay, you need to be, you're, you're zero. But we're gonna put this in the, um, uh, in the update function. So we, we now know, okay, you, you just need to be zero. So time since start to increase speed. I'm gonna set you to, to uh, zero plus essentially, so Increase speed every second, so we'll just start from there. You, we don't need you right this second. But in update, what we need to do is check to see, okay, what what is our, um, uh, what is the exact time since we started? So let time since start equals timer time since start past the context, then we can check, uh, you just saw this first time, what am I building? I'm building an infinite runner, um, and then I've been doing this both in uh, JavaScript and in Rust and GGEZ so that I can learn game programming patterns by applying them in both to sort of refactor these games. Which will help me out a lot because my game dev skills are, you know, a little bit lacking. Uh, okay, so if our now now we want to see, okay, if the current time dev start if that's now greater than greater or equal to, so if time since start if that's now greater than or equal to self dot time since start to increase speed. Then we want to increase the speed. Um, what are you upset about? Mismatch types. Oh, right. Uh, times to start. We also want you to be uh, dot sx u64. Um, oh, well, you're doing JavaScript since the last nine years. Awesome. Uh, last week you decided to learn Rust enough of front end shit. Well, I mean, there, there's always going to be front end stuff, even if Rust drives the back end. Uh, all right. So 
if time since our, okay, so we now know it's time to increase the speed. So we're gonna do self dot obstacle one dot um, increase speed. And then we need to recalculate when the next time. Well, we have the current time since start here. So now we can just say self dot uh, time since start to increase speed. Um, equals uh, time since start plus self dot uh, and then what what did I store it as increase speed every increase speed every x seconds all right it's a little bit of a long line I save you, what do you do? Okay, you, you wrap that into two lines there. Let's see if this now increases our, our speed. Uh-oh, error. I cannot add a sign F32. Uh, so that's stuff the velocity oh, um, in our obstacle here and increase speed. I really just want the X to increase its speed. So no more errors. Let's go ahead and run this. So here's our obstacle. It should be getting faster every five seconds or so. Now it gets faster by a really slow, like small amount. So we may have to wait a little bit. Like, does it, is it feeling, it feels to me like it's getting a little bit faster. Uh, of course, I don't have collision on, so I can just hands off and, you know, the player doesn't actually care about, about this. So is it actually getting faster? I want to say yes. I mean, it's a nice and smooth increase of speed, if that if that is true. And I, I believe I believe it is. All right. So if I wanted to add a second obstacle, so that basically we're we're having to jump over we're constantly having to think about jump over things that's gonna be pretty simple because we already have an obstacle uh structure here i could just store a second obstacle in our library now normally we might think okay we should we should have like a vector of these obstacles i'm only going to be doing two of them so if i add in here obstacle two Uh, then I can create obstacle two here. So that obstacle two equals uh, obstacle new. It's going to be very similar to this other one. Uh, so the X position is, I actually want this to be um, the arena width. Plus, not so the full arena width, I want another half of the arena width. So arena width divided by 2.0. That way it starts far enough away and then we should always have like, it always feels like as soon as one goes off the, well like halfway through, the next one is coming in. Then the height is always gonna be arena height um, minus the obstacle size and then pass in obstacle size. We'll give ourselves obstacle two here. Uh, when we, whenever we run this, so self the obstacle that run, we have to basically repeat these now twice. So not, not the best here. Um, it's not violating the rule of three yet, which I usually follow. It's, we're violating a rule of two, 
Um, okay, and so then here, if if time to increase the speed, we'll increase both of them. So self dot obstacle two dot increase speed. Uh, and then finally, in draw, we want to draw the second obstacle as well. So we'll duplicate this draw here, and this time it'll just be the second obstacle uh, location. Note, however, I can reuse the same obstacle mesh, though. So it's the, it's the same one over and over and over again. Let's see if, uh, if this works out. So our first obstacle, oh, is definitely increasing in speed. That's really, that feels really slow now. Yep, and halfway through we get the other one. And so it just sort of feels like we're constantly getting a barrage and we're moving forward against all of these obstacles that are, that are coming out. Um, that didn't feel right. Oh, you know what? I probably don't want it to show up. I want it to show up right at the edge of the screen, don't I? Because right now, uh, when that second obstacle finishes going off the left of the screen, it goes back to where it started. But I want it to actually reset just to the right edge of the screen here. Um, not like all the way past. So that's uh, our initial location is actually not the same as the reset location. So that's interesting. How do I want to handle that? So maybe maybe I don't care about the initial location. Maybe I do want um, uh, a sort of like a reset location here. So if I rename you to reset location, that'll create an error because uh, this is now reset location. Ooh, I think this works because it realizes, okay, this is a property and not a, uh, a method on the object. But that could be a little bit confusing because, hey, we have reset location somewhere. Yeah, re reset location, but also we have a reset location and they're the same thing. Yeah, let's, let's not use reset location. Um, Right, because I want, I don't want actually rename reset location here. So what do I, what do I want to like name this? Because I don't necessarily want to say the, um, uh, like the, the initial location, because the initial location is going to be different, but I want the reset locations to be exactly the same. I can have res location to reset too. Um, that being okay, so that being said, I want. Um, do we need to be aware of the the arena width? so that we know how far away to start from it. That, we might need that and do the calculations here. So if I, if I add in, okay, location X, location Y, I won't need these locations anymore. I'll know exactly where to start based upon the arena size. So if I say I want, um, the arena width, which is an F32, and arena height, which is an F32, uh, and the size, now I know exactly where to place myself. In fact, I can go back to storing my own size again and like just knowing what I am. So that will make things a little bit simpler. So okay, location equals, well, we know that the uh, the first one, 
Oh, well, see, that's the other thing is we don't know if we're the first one. We like we we're gonna like want to have some kind of offset, um, maybe like an offset multiplier. Uh, hmm. Let's let's put this back. I still call that reset. Let's go back to like initial location two. And then dot x to fix that. So this is something I have to think about is how, how do I want to to like determine what that what the other one is? We can go take a look at the JavaScript, how I solve this problem. I can't remember off the top of my head because it, it has been a little while. Uh, I th th there's a couple different ways we can go about doing this. Uh, we can, uh, we could basically say that the initial location is not what we want to store and like pass in a new, um, pass in the arena width here and then just say it's not, not necessarily initial location is based upon uh, this here and this is where we're going to have the reset location too. That might work uh, for us. Is just give us the um, uh, give us some kind of like reset location to position. So if I change initial location, uh, so location to reset to. Now instead of copying from this location, if I pull this in. Um, actually, I can have this here, but I can pull in the arena size, so the arena width. Uh, and I can make this an F32 here. And so our location, uh, I can now just say, okay, I want this to be a vector 2 new. Uh, our location X is going to be the arena width uh, plus the size. And then the Y is going to be the location Y. And so I just say, okay, well, that's going to be our location to reset to. We, we know that that's where that is. It's always going to be that. The arena width is going to be passed in so we can make that calculation. Uh, we store, we're storing those. Um, it wants me to just do this. Let's, let's try this. So in the beginning, it's a little bit upset with us because we're not passing in uh, the arena width. So we can do that. So if I save you, no more errors. Let's see, let's see how this works. So the first one starts just off the side of the screen. Second one comes in seemingly appropriately. And now, and now everything is sort of moving along as if, well, we just, uh, it's like evenly spaced out. So, this works for the use cases that we want. So I think I'm going to end it uh, right here because I do have my stand up coming up for work, you know, pretty soon. And I don't want to, you know, go over that. I want a little bit of time.